I want to do a fairly quick overview of the path, the, how the Exodus shows the path of salvation or, you, you know, how things work. First, you had Passover, where they put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, of which that represented Yeshua. I believe like the veil and the tabernacle and, and Hebrews talks about that, that Hebrews 10, the latter half of it talks about that, about Yeshua being the veil, his flesh. So we have that <coughs> and there's a picture there of course which I've done a video on already. But, so you have the the sacrifice that saves, just like you have in the in the tabernacle. You have the burnt offerings and the guilt offerings and, and the peace offerings and all these different offerings that were put on this altar and burned. And that was to represent the, the importance, uh, the seriousness of a blood covenant and also to illustrate what Yeshua does for us. So you have the Passover where they're delivered you know and they partake of the lamb which you can see them doing that kind of in the quote Last Supper as, as they like to call it. Um, it was basically it may have been a Passover meal or it may have been Less, he, but he ate it at the beginning of Passover instead of the end, like the Jews generally do today. Uh, but, and probably was at the time of the Exodus that way. So they have that, they're let out, they're baptized through the Reed Sea. 1 Corinthians 10 talks about that. And talks about, you know, that this stuff was written for an example for you. Okay, so then then they get their baptism to, through the Red Sea and they leave Pharaoh behind, the world, Egypt behind. Then you have, then they get to Sinai. And... If you haven't noticed yet, this is all related to the Holy Days. Passover, unleavened bread is a cleansing time. And then after first fruits you have 50 days after first fruits you have the uh, law received at Sinai. And then they went through the wilderness. Granted, the first time they went up fairly, fairly soon, about two years after the Exodus, they went up to the Promised Land, and because they, they were basically uh, afraid, they ended up going into the wilderness for forty years, which was a cleansing process, which is kind of how we are. <coughs> Oh, and by the way, Sinai represents Pentecost, just like our Pentecost is seen in that. And just as they were received the law then, we received the Holy Spirit, which teaches us the law, especially as we read the Word. It teaches us how to worship. And that was, out there you had follow the the pillar of cloud or the pillar of fire through the wilderness like they did kind of the way we need to be following the Holy Spirit conviction when you get conviction of something the clouds moving and you learn if you're obedient you learn to follow it and you just like they had the the table of showbread they had the manna in the wilderness day by day by day 
trusting in God, sp spending time in prayer, but obey. Obey, move when the cloud moves. Trust God for your provision, day by day by day, as they were having to do it with the manna. And eventually, they get, 40 years later, they get to the, the promised land. And even when they get to the promised land, they have to fight, which kind of is a picture to us of, you know, we fight all sorts of struggles as people. He doesn't give us the victory all at once, just like he didn't give them the victory over the land all at once. He, as their numbers grew, he gave them victory. And the same thing can be said about <clears throat> the Holy Spirit in our bodies, I think. The Holy Spirit upon us is that as we obey and fight battles, more of the Holy Spirit is in us until, you know, when we when we become spirit-filled, we're in the land in a sense. And the more spirit-filled we are, the less Satan has opportunity. It's not completely gone, but the less he has opportunity to attack. And they were given rest in the land. If you go read when they got into the land, they observed Passover and unleavened bread just after they had gotten over the Jordan River. They kept Passover and and Passover first fruits and unleavened bread, of course. You know, all this stuff. In the land. They were in a hostile land. And they kept those things. And then you, they had to conquer here and conquer there. And it is, that's the way it is with our life. So these things all create a picture for us as believers of, you know, we have to be strong and courageous. Do things that we wouldn't do in the flesh, but in the spirit. Learn to obey. I would have never expected my to have the beard I do. I would have never expected to be wearing ziziot or to use a tallit or to uh, try to prep things on the Shabbat when I can so that I don't have to cook on the Sabbath. I'm not trying to be legalistic. That's my conviction. Where you are on that spectrum is up to it, you know that's between you and God I try to be strict in my own convictions but show grace to other people just like I know where Sunday keepers are at I don't and I'm not gonna sit there and just bash them for it I try to show them here's why I believe what I do and make your own choices Everyone has to make their own choices. We read, we pray, and whether we obey is up to us. Depends on your heart. You know, is the cultivated enough? Is the is <coughs> that spiritual seed in your heart? Just like you read the seed sower parable. It, do you are you rocky ground? where it grows but it has no firm root or do you get choked out by the world does your spiritual walk get choked out by all the things of the world or do the birds come and get your get the seed uh, just like Satan takes it away from people and that that's where any plants are most vulnerable is when they're first their first sprouting and all they've got is the first leaves they don't have the true leaves you have to protect it from squirrels and rabbits if you live out in the country you have to have solid fences 
which I've done video on how Torah is a fence for us. It helps keep protect us inside the fence and it helps keep Satan and his influence outside from t taking the fruit and, and those sorts of things or you eat greenhouses, things like that, of that nature, or you start seed inside, all these different things, you protect the seed. And, you know, is the ground tilled? If you, the ground is firm, sometimes our struggles and our sinfulness makes us fertile ground. Because he who is forgiven much loves much and when you love just like Christ said if you love me you will keep my commandments that's John 14 and I'd have to find the verse uh, if you love me keep my commandments first John talks all about abiding John 15 talks about Christ talks about abiding John 16 he talks about giving that that the Holy Spirit uh, come and convert us concerning sin, concerning righteousness, and concerning judgment. And he tells us why in John 16. I've done videos on that. And the question is, what kind of seed are you? Sometimes the bigger you struggle and you see victory, that's where seed seat for me was was life changing because I saw some victories by embracing this, and I was like, that helped me to be like, okay, whatever he leads me to do, so I'll do. Starting this YouTube channel, my YouTube channel was part of that for me. Embracing seed seat was part of it for me. Uh, several different things to lead you know the, the the prayer closet why I believe in head covering so strongly is because I've seen where I struggled and how Ziziot helped me that's why I, you know I see head covering as a crown for daughters of the king of the universe which is why it's a physical symbol of spiritual protection. Modesty, same thing. You know, I feel more spiritually strong in my tunic, and I believe it's because it reminds me of that I'm covered in Christ, the burnt offering. So, you know, there's a point where you have to till, your soil has to be tilled, and that's going to affect how, how well the seed that spiritual seed grows in you and are you following the pillar of cloud take your pick on on uh, the the metaphors there so hopefully this is of interest and helpful like and subscribe if you like uh, <clears throat> and comment Feedback is always welcome. And shalom, shalom. May Yahweh bless and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you his peace.